Hello and welcome viewers of AVG News. My name is Olisi Nube. Uh, many of you would know that uh, the Malawian vice president uh, was recently arrested by the country's anti-corruption commission uh, because on allegations uh, that uh, he was involved in craft. That was uh, a few days ago. Uh, Presi Vice President Saulos Cruz Chilima uh, was arrested. It was on a Friday uh, following an investigation which took some months. Uh, now we have online a Malawian uh, activist, Dr. Dominic Chipaira, who is going to unpack uh, what is happening and tell us about uh, the situation in Malawi. Doc, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much, Comrade Mkolis. How is it? Uh, I'm good. Uh, can you unpack what exactly it is that happened for the benefit of our viewers, of course? Um, from what we hear, because always um, when something happens, it means there is a rumor which has been boiling down up to the extent that somebody, let's say the law enforcement agents, uh, take action against him or her. So it is just the unfortunate uh, situation which unfolded uh, regarding our um, um, deputy uh, or vice president of the country, Malawi, Dr. Saulo Klaus Chilima. Yes, so yes, indeed, he was arrested. And he appeared before the court of law. Yes. Yes. Uh, what exactly are the allegations? We only hear that he was involved in craft, and you remember that the president stripped him of his powers, uh, but said he was not constitutionally mandated to uh, to expel him. Now, what exactly it is? Is it that he's being accused of having done? Accused of uh, receiving bribes. Um, uh, those are just allegations. As you already know, um, uh, the law says, uh, there is a saying which says, um, you are always innocent until proven guilty by the court of law. Uh, so, yes, there is those allegations that uh, Comrade Chilima did receive some bribes from the businessman Zuneth Sata. Um, in favor of what we call uh, offering or rendering uh, government tenders to for, to his business associates. So that is an allegation we, which we hear from uh, the media per se, yes. Uh, do we know how much in bribes uh, he's alleged to have received altogether? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, uh, it's a couple of millions of US dollars, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, and when he appeared in court, what happened there? Was he given bail? Was he kept in custody? And when exactly uh, uh, do we expect him to appear in, uh, in next in court? Um, yes, he was um, immediately what we call released on bail. He was uh, not kept in cells um, because he was having uh, what we call his legal counsel uh, to represent him immediately. Yeah, so that is it. Okay. So and, the day, okay. we don't know exactly yet when will be his next, what we call, appearance in court as of now yet. Oh, okay. And then when it comes to African politics and craft against African politicians, there is what we call, uh, especially uh, in Southern Africa, uh, the catch and release, or where you have people arrested without enough evidence. And the, at the end of the day, they are released. Do you think the state in Malawi has got a watertight case against the vice president? <coughs> I don't think so uh, on, on that. Um, that will depend upon what we call uh, the state itself, um, whether they, will have, they do believe that they do have what we call a tight case or not. Uh, but uh, as you have already alluded, it's always about what we call evidence, and sufficient evidence um, to prove that this is what really happened. Yes. For them, 
to have what we call a strong case against you. Yes. Uh, and how is the mood between, because there are allegations that maybe the president is trying to get rid of the vice president based uh, on their differences within the party. Are they that divided in the party? Are they that connected in the party? W what is the situation in the party? In fact, as, as of now, um, we hear just, we do hear um, that Comrade Klaus Sauros Chudima uh, is no longer a part of what we call the Alliance government. So um, that itself, um, uh, it brings what we call confusions amongst members uh, or followers of both sides, uh, be it, uh, but in general view, uh, there is come in, uh, in Malawi, there is no much um, what we call happenings or toy toys or what, what there is come, you know, yes. Oh, okay, so the people are taking this uh, as a clear case of uh, criminal activity whereby the police are acting. Exactly. Oh, okay, so this then gives us to the, I mean, takes us to the point where we're, whereby we have to try and review uh, the fight against corruption within the Malawian government. Is this the first high profile case or there are many others that have been done before? Um, there are, there have been some cases before, um, for example, when Kamuzu Banda, um, was out on, out on, out of power in 1994, uh, the regime change, dragged him to court, up and down, up and down, but it vanished like that. So same with the Dr. Maluzi also. Um, when Bing Wamatarika took over, there was also what we call high profile case of this, um, the same like this one, and now it is this one, you see. So, <laughs> we never know what is how is this one going to end in a, anyway. Uh, and uh, within, I mean, since President Shakwera took over, has he arrested any maybe uh, of the government workers, any other any ministers? Is yeah, yes, 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 yes. There have been so many, uh, so many. Yes, there have been so many. But we don't, we don't near, near necessarily see the end results of it, because you only hear, you, you, you know, most um, nowadays there is freedom of what we call association, freedom of whatsoever. You can be arrested today, tomorrow you are out on bail. Your case will keep on dragging, dragging years and years and years. Then at the end, the people, they lost hope of the, of the case. They forget about it. That is it. So that is politics anyway. Yeah. In your own view, is President Chakwera really determined to end corruption? Yes, he do. Um, Chakwera is a strong fighter of corruption. He, he really he is a strong fighter of cor corruption. But I think amongst his... Uh, his colleagues, um, they are those what we call rotten potatoes, and uh, that makes him as a bad person. If he doesn't take care on those rotten potatoes within his own wa what we call powers, then he will always have a problem at the end of the day himself too, you see. Yeah, and... Uh You've said that the situation on the ground is very calm, but you have already alluded to the existence of uh, rotten potatoes within the alliance uh, or within government. Do you foresee a situation whereby the alliance breaks uh, and some people go their own ways, it separates? Or do you think that only the those that you have termed rotten potatoes will be accounted for and the alliance will remain intact? You see, politics, that's why they call it is, is a data game. You see, um, the pro it's not only in Malawi, do you understand? The politics yeah. of our uh, Africa is always a problem because 
to be honest with, with you, many African people, there are very few African leaders, when they come to power, they are already rich. They are already billionaires. They, are, they have been business people already, making money outside there. And there are very, very few, you can count them. But the rest of the majority of the African leaders, when they come to power, most of them, they are poor. If you look at their bank accounts, they've got maybe less than a, a million dollars into their savings or into their investment. So when they come to power, even bringing all those their, their, their ministers becomes a time for them to, you, you see, to enrich themselves. So it's same with Tonsi Alliance. If you can look at Tonsi Alliance, most of these people who joined the Tonsi Alliance, if you look at their, their economic status, maybe very few who came to the Tonsi Alliance with what we call um, some couple of millions of dollars, but many now. Uh, so that is a problem. So whoever comes to power and sit on that chair, everybody knows that these five years came, I must make sure that I do ABC because otherwise I'll be, I'll be a laughing stock at the end of the day to say, look at this one, he was in power, what did he do? Yeah, he, him and me, we are, we are just all the same. So that is the problem. And if that um, continues, and then the Tonsi uh, Alliance will be the end. We'll say, we'll kiss goodbye to the Tonsi Alliance because of the stringent measures which Comrade Chavkuela is trying to, to put in place to end what we call corruption. So some of those rotten potatoes cannot accept that. Do you, do you understand? They will say, this guy, he, he's a bad guy. We don't want him. You see, corruption is everywhere. Everywhere in the world. Whether the rich powers, superpowers, whatever. There is co corruption. But what matters is the difference or the degree of corruption, um, uh, the way it happens, you see. Obviously, a, a vice president is a very powerful person with so many people who may be in support of him within the alliance. Uh, have you heard maybe some dissenting voices already publicly from those within the alliance or from government ministers so far after his arrest? Yeah, there is one right now uh, in his own political circle, like uh, Comrade... Um, Frank Tumpalemene Fumbo, he has just resigned being the publicity secretary of what we call the UTM party. Um, recently, two days ago, I, I, I think so, yes. Okay. You see. And how, how many parties make up the alliance? The um, couple of few of them, I think they, they might be, if not mistaken, five, five, yes, five or six or so, because it's... Uh, I see MCP, UTM, um, um, UDF, uh, PP, um, yeah, ab about five. Uh, is there any chance that the alliance may split before the next election based on the fight uh, for, yes, that, I mean, against craft by the president? That, 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 that is obvious. That is very obvious. We don't see any uh, Tonsi alliance to be intact um, till to the next uh, alliance. We never know what might come up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and how widespread is corruption in Malawi? And here we're not talking only about politicians, even the civil service, uh, public service workers. How widespread is corruption there? Corruption is everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, corruption is um, is um, is killing the economy of our country. That's why Chagwera is very strict on on that. He's trying to tighten all those ends. You see, his fair five first year term of Chagwera, his duty is try to clean up those um, dead woods. Uh, so. It, he, he has a job to do because he really has to close up all those those, like what he did, Comrade Magufuli in Tanzania. His five years term, you see what he did. He tried to close all those loopholes, and this is what Chagwera is trying to do as well. So uh, the very few might like him. Uh, do you uh, do you understand? But many we we hate him. You see. 
Uh, do, do you think he's winning that fight? He is winning. He is winning, and uh, if he he, uh, he he persists, he will win at the end. The at the end of the day, I I, I believe he is a fighter. Yeah, I believe he is a fighter. Yeah, and in the event that the alliance splits and uh, Mr. Chakwera goes to the next election, uh, leading as a, a splinter of that, do you foresee him winning? Do you foresee Malawians sticking with him? He, it depends with his backgrounds, um, the way he has. Look, uh, that's why I said politics is, is, is something that you cannot uh, predict. All right, um, uh, there is this thing uh, in Africa: these regionalism powers, then tribalism, also plays a ma major role in our uh, in our African politics. You may, I may hate him because I'm from the north, but what about his people from the central region and some of his cronies from the southern region? Uh, they might, they might like him. They might vote him in. So it becomes very rare for the sitting president the next term for him to lose uh, elections again. It's very rare in, um, in Africa. It's very, very rare. You, you see, he might come back again. He might come back again because uh, you will come up with an, uh, another strategy on how to win the this coming uh, 2020 25 elections. He might win again. You see, let us give him a, a, a benefit of a doubt. He might win again. Yeah, and then there is uh, a reaction, obviously, from the markets following the arrest of the vice president. How have the markets reacted in Malawi? Uh, not so bad. Not so bad. Um, the Malawi quarter has still since it has been stable since the dev the devaluation, but um, it's it's not all that much bad um, as um, uh, uh, due to this war to this uh, incident which happened to uh, three days ago. Yes. Yeah. and you, you you've just expressed uh, confidence in the determination and ability of President Shakura to fight corruption. Is that the general mood in Malawi? As I said earlier on, um, there are those who doesn't want corruption to end, and there are those who want corruption to end. So if you look at the general mood, if you ask about the general mood, you find about uh, 40% um, wants uh, what we call corruption totally to, to end. But the majority, the, the business cronies who have been uh, what, what we call relying on government tenders uh, due to their cronies, and they cannot like it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't, cannot like it. And they, they keep on going. Uh, publicly uh, denouncing uh, the administration of the current sitting government. That is how it, it is. You see, you find op opposition built what we call momentum based on, uh, on what somebody is trying to rectify. Yeah. And how well equipped and well trained uh, is the Malawi Anti-Corruption Bureau to be able to tackle this corruption because as you have said, it's widespread. As you have said, there are political uh, shenanigans happening in there. Those guys are, are well trained, do you understand? Are very, very well trained. Look at Martha Chizuma. She's, she's, she's a strong woman, very strong woman. And the, uh, she's, she's capable of executing her duties um, pro professionally, but you find some some people still more don't like her. So what did you say about that? Eh? It's the, the very same people who doesn't want Koro to see corruption to come to an end. Yes. Uh, Dr. Dominic Chipwaira, uh, we thank you very much for gracing this show. Is there any last word that you'd want to say to the viewers or even to Malawians? In as far as yeah. this fight against corruption is concerned, um, I, I would just like to say 
uh, it's always about calm. Rome was not built in a day, do you understand? Rome wasn't built in a day. Even South Africa, the way it is, it wasn't built in a day. It took what we call ages and ages to build what we call a year country. Chakwela has been uh, in power. Uh, you count, uh, it's, it's, it's only maybe two years. Uh, but uh, we we can see what he's, he's trying to do. He's very passionate about his people. He feels sorry about his people, the way the economy is growing. That's why he moves up, up and down, trying to find means and, and ways how to bring uh, our economy back uh, to power. So let us try to give him some time. The five years of Chakwera will determine his way forward. I thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank well, you, Comrade and uh, Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Dominic Chipwaira, a Malawian activist. He is based in Malawi, giving us a rundown of the situation in the country following the arrest uh, of Vice President uh, Lima uh, over allegations uh, of, uh, craft, of, of involvement in craft 